Welcome to Bible in an Hour. Your search to understand the Bible is finally over. In the next hour, the Bible will be open to you. For over 15 years, Wade Butler has untangled the Bible for listeners all across the nation. Now he will untangle it for you. Wade Butler is the co-founder of the Bible in an Hour California Partnership and author of Bible in an Hour and many other easy-to-understand Bible presentations and written materials. Enclosed in this package, you will find four charts that will aid you in this discovery. Please have them ready before the CD begins. Now relax and get ready to hear the Bible in an Hour. Welcome to Bible in an Hour. I'm Wade Butler. Imagine understanding the Bible. Imagine it. Soon, it will be a reality for you in about an hour. The Bible is the best-selling book in the world. Millions of copies are sold each year. Zealous believers in the Bible literally give Bibles away to interested people. Bibles, Bibles everywhere. Yet very few people understand the theme of the Bible. Most people give up on the Bible because they discover that it is not in chronological order. It seems to skip here and there and leave the reader mystified. This is because in Western society, we expect a book to have a plain beginning and end with plenty of details in between. The Bible is not like this at all. The books of the Bible are gathered into types of literature, not a timed line chronology. The Old Testament has the history first, followed by the literature, then the prophets, arranged from the longest to the shortest. The New Testament also contains the history first, followed by the letters, which are arranged from the longest to the shortest. This makes reading the Bible very strange to most people's eyes. Other people have been to church all their lives and have been brought up on Bible stories as part of their earliest memories at vacation Bible school or Sunday school. They know all of the stories, but they have no idea how they all fit together. It's like they have a string of pearls all loose in a bag and never have seen the whole necklace. It's like they have all the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, but have never seen the top of the box. Bible in an Hour will show you the way the pearls are strung together, and finally, finally, you'll see the top of the box. You should have four charts in front of you. Chart 1 is a depiction of the whole Bible from beginning to end. Charts 2 and 3 depict the sweeping themes of the Old Testament. Chart 4 is the New Testament. The whole Bible is encapsulated in the understanding of three promises, three covenants, and one sentence. That's all. When you learn these three promises, three covenants, and one sentence, you will know more about the Bible than most people ever will, and you will finally, finally understand what the Bible is all about. Turn the hourglass over. The hour begins now. Chart 1. Note that Chart 1 starts with a lazy eight figure. This is the symbol for infinity. It stands at the beginning and the end of Chart 1. This helps us to understand that the Bible depicts the world and everything we know and everything we see, that it depicts it as having started from infinity and will go into infinity, where it will exist in a different form. In short, this framing with the symbol of infinity reminds us that God creates time and all who inhabit time out of infinity. Three interlocking circles form the ancient symbol for God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. An arrow always means action toward something or upon something or movement towards something. Therefore, three circles with an arrow pointing to the earth means that God acted toward, or created, the heavens and the earth. In the middle of the chart, you see three interlocking circles acting toward a man. This means that God spoke to and made promises to a man. Down a little farther, you see a man with three circles as his head. This is Jesus, the one who is God and man at the same time. He is God become man. The lamb and the cross simply mean that a death of a lamb occurred in order to usher in a clean earth and heaven and send it in new existence into infinity. This chart, then, is an overview of the whole universe and all things seen and unseen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He spoke, Let there be light. When God said, Let there be light, the Creator was simply getting His tools out and saying, Let there be raw material. From that moment, God made the universe in six days. Day by day, He formed the seas and populated them, the earth and covered it with flora and fauna, the stars and the sun and the moon, all from raw material of light. God defines Himself as light in whom there is no darkness. 
Therefore, the universe as we know it, both the things we see and cannot see, are deeply connected to and dependent upon God himself. Far from being a cosmic watchmaker who made the universe and set it spinning out until it runs out of juice, God deeply, essentially tied himself to the creation and liked what he did. He called each phase of what he created good. No flaws, no death, no pain. Essentially and totally good. On the sixth day, he made man, Adam. All of the other things that God made, he did so with a word and the sheer power of his command. But man, God took a radical interest in. He announced that he was going to make a creature in his own image. A creature, a reflection of the essence of God in the mud. With his own hands, God fashioned the clay into a man. From the deepest muscle tissue to the fine hairs on the forearms, God formed a reflection of himself and then he kissed him alive. He blew into the nose of the clay in the dirt, and the clay came to life. Now God had a creature with whom he could converse, and who had an independent mind and the ability to make choices. All of the animals and plants were brought to Adam, and he named them all. He was a perfect body with a perfect mind. God, and what a picture this is, placed each one of his creations in front of Adam and said, Name it, what shall we call it? That was the playful scene in paradise. After assigning names to the whole creation, Adam was alone. God knew what that felt like, for God is alone himself. There is no other God. Even in his perfect state, Adam was lonesome. There was no one like him. He was with God, but God was not enough. He was still lonely. God did surgery. He put the man into a deep sleep and took genetic material from his side and fashioned a female human from the raw material of the man. She was called Eve. From his side he made a new creature, a bride for Adam. God married them there. Adam was delighted. This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, he said. God then told the two of them to create new humans so that loneliness would never again plague the Adam that he had made. Adam and Eve were created to be eternal. They had no idea or knowledge of mortality, for nothing was mortal. The whole creation, including man, was essentially and intimately connected with God, the light, the creator who constantly infused the creation with his own immortal life. Notice on your chart one, God made the heavens and the earth and put man and woman on it. Notice the symbols for male and female. Also notice that the world was white and clean, perfect and good at the beginning. But notice on the chart that the earth and all creation became black and corrupted, disconnected from the life source of God. Death and degeneration entered the universe, and this is how it happened. When God finished the creation, there were two trees. One was the portal to eternal life and eternal connection with God. The other was the portal to death and disconnection from God. One, if eaten and opened, would cement forever the connection between God and His creation. The other would unplug the creation from God, and it would degenerate and devolve into a lifeless, dead, dark mass. Then God told them plainly that if they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that they would die and death would permeate the whole of their kingdom, he left the choice up to them. The serpent, which was part of the creation that had somehow gotten at severe odds with God, was jealous of the man and the woman, and wanted to ruin them and the creation that God loved. He laid wait and plotted to trick Adam and Eve into opening the portal of death and decay. The serpent needed their permission to dominate them. This was a difficult task. But the serpent was sneakier than any of the other creatures that God had made. Lucifer, the serpent, planned all of this out of sheer spite. He waited for a long time, lurking in the shadows, until Adam and Eve were standing together in front of the two portals. He came up to the pair and planted a seed in their minds that would bear a crop of misery. He told them that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was the portal to becoming a god. No longer would they be in just the image of God. No, he told them, you can become gods yourselves. The woman looked at the fruit of the tree and began to see it differently in light of the serpent's words. In fact, it did look good. It looked sweet and pretty. She came to the conclusion that it looked as if it really would make them wise, maybe as wise as God himself. The man, Adam, looked on. He did nothing to stop the woman. He let her eat the fruit first. Eve picked and ate the fruit and opened the portal to death, a crack, just an opening. Then Adam, seeing that she did not die, took the fruit from her offering hand and ate it, fully expecting to suddenly arrive at being a god. 
Instead, they suddenly realized that they had been tricked. Shame, death, guilt, misery, and decay flooded into the earth like a black oil spill of death, with the serpent riding the tide. They were so frightened and dismayed that they ran from the tree, perhaps to the beating of the hissing laugh of the serpent. They attempted to cover themselves and their shame with whatever leaf and plant they could find. They hid from God. God came to the garden as he always did, in the cool of the day. When he arrived, he realized that something was desperately wrong. When God saw that they were trying to cover themselves and were ashamed, he knew what had happened. They had opened the portal of death and disconnected the creation from the life flow of the Creator. Lucifer was standing by the couple, quite pleased with himself. He had accomplished his goal. God asked Adam what had happened. Adam told him the truth and confessed. The woman had given him the fruit and he ate it. Eve confessed that the serpent tricked her into eating the fruit by telling her that it would make her a goddess. And then God turned to the serpent and boomed a promise to him. Because you have done this, I will put hatred between you and those like you and the child that Eve will have in the future. A child of hers who will come through a woman will crush your head, but he will be killed in the process, struck with fangs in the heel. God understood and believed that the serpent had tricked Adam and Eve into giving up their role as caretakers. He made a commitment to trick the serpent into giving it back. Since the serpent had tricked the woman, the woman would give birth to the one who would trick the serpent. God then began to take care of Adam and Eve. He took away the leaves and the grass that they had used to makeshift cover themselves, and then he killed some animals and covered Adam and Eve with their skins. 